all over the world by striving to cure cancer and numerous other terminal diseases with a variety of ways, including biomedical engineering, animal testing, and stem cell research. Stem cell research is the type of research that costs billions of dollars in our taxes, is plenty of living beings to supply, and is extremely slow in development. Hi, my name is David Liu, and this is my partner, Bill Guo, and we're on the con side of stem cell research. First of all, stem cells are the origin of all specialized cells. A stem cell is like a piece of plain old blank sheet of paper. Alone, it has no value. But once it becomes a magnificent painting or a well-written essay, it has more value, like when stem cells become nerve cells or brain cells. To get these stem cells, they need to take out an embryo or unborn baby from 1 to 14 days old, because that is when the stem cells are still stable, not changing in any way. And the research of this is using those cells to find a cure to diseases. However, many other companies are aiming to clone humans. Of course, we do understand the unlimited potential of those petite cells. But as of now, the scientists who claim to be making progress are just barely pricking away at the shell that is the complex system of stem cells. We are strongly against stem cell research because it's morally wrong, wasting our money, and yields little results. For this research to work, they need to find a way to change the stem cells into the specialized cells needed in one or another part of the body. For example, a patient has a heart problem. The stem cell scientists take stem cells out of an unborn child and alter them into the healthy heart cells needed. And then the doctor could replace the ill heart cells with the new stem cell formed ones. Although this might sound pleasing and promising to people with no experience, this actually has a great deal of problems. Getting the stem cells is already a huge problem. Embryos that are put into stem cell research are for people who already decided to have abortion and agreed to donate. Rarely do a woman decide to have abortion in the first 14 days of pregnancy. During that time, they are usually in stress, and most of the time, they didn't even know they were pregnant, according to abortion experts Sharon and Trisha. But, they, but if they do decide to have the abortion and the unborn baby is less than 14 years old, there is even less chance that they will want to donate it. Second problem. After years of research, years and years, they still don't have the cure to many diseases because the technology we have today could be eons away from the technology needed, according to Human Embryo Experimentation by Ed Roman. The third problem is the infamous cancer. In 2007, the Kyoto and Wisconsin scientists discovered another way to produce stem cells. Use the virus to carry four human genes into an adult cell. Although this can reprogram the cell back into stem cells, the virus used to carry the four genes has a bad habit of plunking itself onto spots on the cell where it can cause cancer. No, mice treated with adult stem cells have died from tumors in 20% of the cases, which is why the FDA doesn't approve of a few small treatments with stem cells, states DNC 2006, written by Stanford scientists. If they actually found out a way to solve all those problems, another thing that will prevent stem cells use is rejection. Rejection is when our body rejects the new tissue or organ because it has a different DNA sequence. If this happens, the immune system will attack the new healthy cells. Now back to the example. The patient with a bad heart gets some of his heart replaced with healthy parts created by stem cells. Hooray, but no. Then his immune system has a high percentage to reject the tissue. If that happens, he would have more issues with the missing piece of his heart. Unlike donor organs, stem cells, tissues, and organs have a higher rate of rejection. On August 28, 2008, Stanford researchers have verified that stem cells tissues and organs have been resoundingly rejected by the immune system, according to Newsweek, December 3rd, 07. Those stem cells don't even give us a reason, those stem cell scientists don't even give us a reason to trust them, providing us with false hope and a job of their insane fantasies. We need dead-on results, which they have not given us. We need a better view of what they're going for, which they have not informed us about. We need our hard-earned money back for something that better suits the civilization, which they have taken away from us. The stem cell research project cost $3 billion to the fund. In the first month of the project, they started fighting about the money and how people should get paid. Should we really trust that kind of money in those hands? That was reported on the Pasadena Star News on December 7, 2004. Stem cell research uses money that cuts down on education, health, police, and environment salaries. Now, the greatest obstacle of this research is the morality and danger it poses to how the concept of life is interpreted. Stem cell scientists in Harvard and UCSF are aiming to clone unborn babies. If they achieve that, it will lead us on a slippery slope to the production of parentless cloned babies. This will surely devalue actual human life, and soon, human lives will become expendable. 
We were put on this planet for a purpose, and it's one we can't always control. There must be a line drawn with toying with someone else's life. Stem cell experimentation is a complex enterprise that advances at the cutting edge of scientific understanding. Cutting edge of scientific understanding means at the edge where we know little or nothing about. In this domain of biotechnology that most of us know little or nothing about, how are we to blindly trust the experts even when they eliminate the values that we believe in? Thank you.